If you're an architect, you might have come into the situation where you would want to render out your project. So you got geometry, you got lights, you got textures, you place your camera, you hit render. And it just doesn't look great. In fact, it doesn't look great at all. And that, my friends, might be due to several reasons. Boring perspectives, wrong lightning, missing context, lack of ideas, who knows what. That happened to me all the time until I started to apply a few basic habits and tricks before and during rendering that helped me to come up with more interesting and simply better looking images. Today I'm going to show you three of my favorites to come up with better renderings, nothing super fancy, just a few basic ideas that you can apply today. I would say, let's just get started. For demonstration purposes, I'm going to use this Beach House proposal that I was working last week on. We will take out the color, keep it a bit more abstract for our purpose today. Okay, so the first tip that I have for you is angles. Sometimes placing a camera just to get the building as a whole onto your image into frame isn't enough. There are a bunch of aspects that you want to consider before hitting that render button. There's storytelling, there's user's perspective, there's composition, proportion, all that goes into angles. And I got used to think about angles right at the beginning of my process when working on projects. Because we will need to present a project usually with two-dimensional images and a meaningful sequence of those, so our project can be understood at the end. So every time I have my geometry bundles roughly outlined, I already start thinking about how the final image could look like and what the final story sequence could be. So occasionally I would just take a 10 minutes break and I would be very critical with what's in front of me and think about what could be the angles that look interesting, nice and most importantly actually needs detail. I don't want to model parts that will never get shown and there are usually a lot of parts that never get shown. Then I usually define my views, create a test running or simply a few screenshots. I would often just create every day a screenshot of my project so I have kind of a log of my views. That's a process that also keeps me on track with my project and I can nicely follow up on the progress later on. With that routine, my render perspectives really also improve framing over time because I'm constantly changing and improving my angles right from the beginning. So once I go into render production, I'm sure I'm happy with my perspectives and I don't have to change them later, wasting time when there's usually not much time left. When I'm not sure how it's gonna turn out, I would take those screenshots, I would open them in Photoshop and I would start sketching over them and see how those renderings actually could unfold. I paint in the trees, the people, the props, all the stuff which is relevant for the project to be placed into context. Super useful, quick and easy, definitely helps me every time to speed up my development of my projects. Second tip that I have for you is to switch from horizontal or landscape format to vertical or also called portrait format. So this can be useful for either setting a vertical structure like a tall building or an atrium into frame or simply helps to find a fresh perspective onto the project overall. Often it can be quite surprising how a project can be viewed in a completely different way just by switching the format of an image. So in this example you can see there's nothing too interesting about this image having it in landscape format. So now watch this, just by flipping over from horizontal to portrait, it got way more interesting within a second. You can see more of the foreground, which kind of grounds the image because you have a nice gradient from a dark bottom, transitioning to a very light top. And it also lets you focus on a completely different aspect of the building. While in the landscape version, it's probably better to stage a social event like a family gathering. The portrait image suits me better to stage a scene where, for example, this woman is reading a book on a relaxed afternoon, right? So very different emotions and moods you can deliver just by switching the orientation of your image. One thing to be careful about is that the presentation of your project might completely change in terms of layout and feel that you're aiming for. Also, if I do vertical renderings, I like to do at least two, so my presentation looks a bit more intentional and cohesive, but if you get that right, your projects can really shine with that simple hack. Before we keep going, if this has been useful or interesting so far, don't forget to subscribe, that would really help me to grow my channel and make more videos like this. Okay, let's keep going. So the third tip that I have for you is to shoot through something. Again, that goes back to angles. You, you don't always want to show everything of your building in every image. Especially if you're trying to create some sort of story sequence for your images, you can create a bit of tension, excitement and emotion 
if you don't give your design away in every image. So just instead of placing your camera in a way so everything of your building or your space can be seen without any visual occlusions, try to give it a little bit more oomph by shooting through something. So take your camera, back up a little bit and try to place it behind a tree, a scrub a person, you will see it immediately becomes more interesting and it helps you with the right props to put it in context and tell the story even better. I like to use some highly realistic scrubs or trees or simply a person in 3D that fits contextually into the scene. You can do it also with Photoshop, but if I use 3D objects, it catches the actual light and the shadows very nicely and makes it look more realistic. And all that without post-production. In this case, we can add also some additional realism by adding some depth of field to the image, which in my opinion makes it look just so much better. Shoot through something, really important one. Okay, I got one more bonus, which I think is not just important for renderings, but also for any kind of creative process in general, and it's think opposite. So I think there are so many ways to get stuck in creative processes and also other aspects of life. So, so sometimes to get going and keep progressing, it helps to think opposite. What I mean with that is sometimes I try to think what would absolutely make no sense at all, or what's the most crazy I can do with this project in terms of rendering, that means what are the weirdest perspectives or probably not even pretty perspectives or, or perspectives no one would actually understand and I would try to get those. Which sometimes just turns on the light bulb and helps me to, to come up with things that I wouldn't otherwise with playing it safe. So sometimes just think opposite in order to find something unexpected, something that is not super apparent, something you need to search for or simply stumble upon. If we go back specifically to the topic of rendering, from 100 possible perspectives, you might have 99 bad ones and only one great one. It's about finding this one great perspective. That's it guys. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if that was interesting or useful to you. These are my four principles that I can give you for better renderings. However, you can also apply them to photography, which is in many ways no different. There are tons of other principles out there which we could talk about and are important for better images, but I truly believe it's better to just focus on certain new information, try to master it and move on to the next lesson. But anyway, I would be very interested what are your tips for better images. Let me know in the comments. In that sense, I wish you the best and see you next time here at my channel where we talk about architecture and design. See you next time.